the blockchain series. So far, we've created a blockchain application that allows two players to wager on the result of a game, that game of rock, paper, scissors. However, there is a major security vulnerability. Bob can win every game. How is this possible? Our version of the game only executed an honest version of Bob, that is, one that followed the Reach program exactly, including his private local steps. When Alice published her wager, she also published her hand. This means in Bob's local step, we could access Alice's hand and use it to determine Bob's hand. Instead of retrieving Bob's hand from the front end, we could compute the hand so that Bob always wins. Now this is a special computation that will ensure that Bob's hand always beats Alice's hand. Thinking back to those indices from before, let's say Alice's hand is rock, or zero. This makes Bob's hand one, because zero plus one equals one, and one divided by three gives us a remainder one. The index one maps to paper, and paper beats rock, so Bob wins. Let's try running the program with these changes. All right, Bob wins. Let's try again. And Bob wins again. And Bob will continue to win until we change this only code so that it actually retrieves the hand from the front end. Another thing to note is that in this version, backend Bob never interacts with the front end. Bob's hand is just computed on the back end. This means that the get hand function is never used. This operation is never called. What that means is that Bob played his hand never occurs in the console. We only see that Alice played paper. Now is this just a fluke? How do we know that Bob will always win? Well, Reach comes with an automatic verification engine that we can use to mathematically prove that this program will always result in Bob winning. Specifically, we'll prove that the outcome variable will always be zero. That's in the back end. Let's prove this theorem in our reach program. We'll add a requirement statement that requires Bob to be dishonest for the proof. We'll require Bob's hand to always equal Alice's hand plus one mod three. That's the same equation we have up here. Then we'll conduct the proof by asserting the outcome is always zero. We'll use an assert statement, outcome equals zero. That's the outcome for Bob to win. Now let's compile it. In the output, we see 23 theorems were checked. If we scroll back up to our previous compilation, only 18 theorems were checked. With our require and assert statements, more theorems were proved with our code. It jumps up to 23. Now you might be thinking, why 23 instead of just 20? We added two code statements, and so we should get 20 theorems checked. While Reach uses different verification modes in order to prove the theorems, that's why you see more than you may expect for checked theorems. So why is this all important? These assertions allow us to provide security, or lack thereof, with this program. We can prove that a participant is dishonest or honest, and that's essential in blockchain development. Now many programs include assertions like these, but Reach is one of the small few that actually conducts a mathematical proof at compile time. We used the automatic verification engine to prove that an attack would work as we expected it would. However, typically, you would use these verification tools to verify that no flaw exists and no attack is possible. So let's change Bob back to an honest participant. Now, Reach does include some assertions automatically in every program. That's why every version of Rock, Paper, Scissors has a said number of theorems checked. We can see what these theorems actually do by deliberately inserting an error into the program. So let's change the computation of the payout. 
We'll make it so that if Alice wins, she only gets her wager back and not Bob's. Let's compile it again. All right, so our program has an error, and it's an error with quite a few details. Let's look at the first part of the message. It says there was an attempt to prove the theorem that the balance at the end of the program is zero. If the balance is not zero, there could be network tokens sealed in the contract forever, and that would be very bad. The tokens should always get paid out at the end. Later on in the message, we get some lines that could have caused the theorem to fail. It could have been how we retrieved the wager or the hand. It could also be how we calculated the payout. Of course, we know what the error is because we caused it, and that shows up in the error message. Now these kinds of automatic verifications are helpful because you don't need to remember to put them into your program. You're automatically protected from entire categories of errors. Now let's add an assertion to ensure that Bob will not know Alice's hand before he chooses his own. Otherwise, the compilation will be rejected. We'll add a single line of code to verify that Alice's hand is unknowable to Bob. Unknowable, Bob should not know Alice's hand. This is a knowledge assertion, and it ensures that Bob does not know Alice's hand at this point in the program. In this case, it's not true, because Alice shares her hand in the publication with the consensus network. After reviewing the code a bit, it may seem obvious that this assertion is untrue, but many times it's not. Let's compile this. Of course, it fails. Specifically, the unknowable theorem fails because Bob does know Alice's hand. Now, it's not enough to correct failures and attacks as you discover them. To create the most secure program, you must add assertions that would fail if the attack or failure were present. If you're familiar with unit testing, it's kind of like that. We don't write a unit test once and then delete it. We keep it in the program or in the testing suite to ensure that the code works as expected. With these assertions, we can ensure that these attacks are not present and they won't accidentally be reintroduced. Now that you're more familiar with how automatic verifications work, in the next lesson, we'll apply them to this program. Thank you to Algorand and Reach for sponsoring the series. If you have any questions about blockchain development, please join me in the Reach Discord in the Days of Blockchain channel. See you next time and happy coding.